Today we're going to learn how to extract amazing details from the sky, bring out the clouds and mold the colors the way that you like just by using Blendif. It looks super beautiful and it's super easy and I guarantee once you learn it, you will enjoy doing it. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and if you want to download any photos used in the video, make sure to go ahead and check the links in the description. So first off, simple, create a new layer by clicking on this new layer icon. Simple, right? Now take the brush, sample the color of the sky, not the clouds. Okay. Just click here, foreground color and sample any of this color. So this is the blue color and select B. B stands for brightness, H is hue, S is saturation and B is brightness. And we want to take the brightness down just like this. Maybe this is fine and hit OK and maybe increase the saturation of the same shade. So select S. OK, decrease the brightness, select S and increase the saturation just a little bit. Click OK and start painting. Make sure the flow is somewhere around 30, 20 ish. So I'll go 25 and start painting just like this. Make the brush a little softer. And by the way, you can hold the alter option right mouse button, drag it to the right to make it bigger, drag it to the left to make it smaller, drag it up to make it soft, drag it down to make it hard. Make it soft and make it a little large and start painting just like this. Okay. And once you have painted a considerable area, then you can change the colors a little bit. It's taking time because this is a huge image. Now you can change the colors. Just double click on it. Change the color just a little bit. Maybe increase the saturation and change the hue just a tiny bit just like this and hit OK and paint in some other area here just like this. Now once you're done, you can also change the color again and paint in this area. What I would do personally is that I would increase the saturation a little bit more and maybe change the hue a little bit and brightness, brighten it up a little bit just like this and paint this area. You can go crazy with this. Okay. You can become as much creative with this as you want and you can just keep on painting. Now, once you do that, once you have done your painting, now is the time to do the magic and make the sky really, really good. So all you need to do, open up the layer styles to do that, right click on it and go to blending options, or you can just double click on the right hand side of the layer. That's easy. Now, once you open blend if take the slider of the underlying layer from right to left. Okay. And now it's very harsh. So all you need to do, hold the alter option, click on it and just divide the sliders. Wow. Have a look at it. Just play with the sliders. That looks amazing, isn't it? Now, once you're satisfied, click OK. Now let's understand what's happening here because understanding the concepts, that's the most important thing. So for a moment, let's just turn this layer off and let's create a new layer and fill it with a gradient. So. I've selected the gradient tool already and I've chosen black to white. Okay. Let's fill this with the gradient. Simple, right? Now let's open up the layer style dialog box to do that. You already know, double click on the right hand side of the layer. This opens up the layer style dialog box. Now here you will see there is a box called blend if this is a complete sections. Now this has two slider sets, this layer and the underlying layer. Let's see what happens when we play with this layer. If you take this ladder from left to right, what's happening is the dark areas of the current layer, which is this layer is becoming invisible. As you begin to take this ladder from left to right, now it's targeting the darkest pixels. If you take it to the right, it's targeting the next darkest pixel in line, right? The next darkest pixel in line, the next, the next, the next. Okay. As you move forward, it's targeting the less darker pixels along with the darkest pixels. Okay. Simple. If you take this slider from the right, it will make invisible the brighter pixels of this layer, which is the current layer. Okay. Now it's just making invisible the brightest pixels, little less brightest pixels along with it, little less brighter pixels, little less brighter. And you get the idea. Now, what does the underlying layer do? It also makes parts of the current layer invisible, but based on the brightness level of the underlying layer, right? So if we take this to the right, it's making invisible the dark areas, not of this layer, but of the underlying layer 
or the layers which are beneath it. Okay, so let's have a look. So under this layer, we have this layer, right? This layer is turned off, so it doesn't matter. So under this layer, we have this one. And in this, these are the dark areas. The trees are the dark areas. So if we take this ladder to the right, it will make the dark areas of the underlying layer, which means the layer which is under it, invisible, right? Similarly, if we use this one, it will make the bright areas of the underlying layer or the layer which is under it, okay? All the layers which is under it, the combination of all the layers which is under it, invisible. What's happening in this case, if we go to the blend if options, have a look. Let's reset that. We have painted with a dark color. Now, this is the most interesting thing. Clouds are bright, right? Brighter than the sky. So we want to delete the bright pixels of the clouds from this layer. So if we delete the bright pixels of the clouds, which is in the underlying layer from this layer, what will happen is the clouds will become visible, right? And the sky will retain this dark color. Simple, right? So if we take the slider of the underlying layer from right to left, what will happen is since the clouds are bright, brighter than the sky, those pixels will be deleted or in other words, hidden in this current layer. So if you do that, see the clouds are becoming more and more visible. And since this is very harsh, you can make it soft by holding the alter option and clicking on it. What this does is that it separates the slider and makes the transition between area that is visible and the area that is not visible smooth. Okay. So you can play with the sliders and there you go. I hope that made sense to you. Click OK if you're satisfied. And here's the thing. You can take the brush and you can paint after the fact. Suppose you want to change the color and suppose you want to paint a little extra. So you would just click on it, select the color that you like and maybe decrease the brightness, increase the saturation and maybe change the hue just a little bit and you want to paint in some extra areas. You can do that. You can do that after the fact. It is fun. Have a look. You can paint in this area. This is too much and you can play with it as much as you like. So suppose you wanted to paint this area with gray or dark gray. So you would again go there and select dark gray color and paint back in this area just like that. It's simple, right? You can paint in just like an artist, which brings us to our next example where we will be solely focusing on colors and blend modes. It will be fun. So in this example, simply create a new layer. And this time we will create two layers, one for the brighter areas, one for the dark areas. So we want to brighten these areas with yellows and oranges. Right? So take the brush, make it a little smaller. Let's say, let's sample this color. Okay. And increase the saturation. Let's come to S, increase the saturation. And maybe I'll go increase the brightness a little bit. No, brightness is fine, I guess. Saturation is the brightest. So there we go. Hit OK once you're satisfied. Flow 25, just start painting. Don't worry about how it looks. We can take care of that. We can add masks later. That looks nice. Okay. Now let's paint a little orange there, here and there. So we would go change the hue just a little bit, make it a little orange ish and paint in a little there. That looks great. Maybe here. Don't forget the reflection. It has to be the same. Okay, fine. Now I will go back to yellows and we'll go to the little bright yellow and paint in little areas like that. Remember, we are just painting the bright areas of the layer or the areas that we want to brighten. For the dark areas, we'll have separate layer. Let's open up the layer styles dialog box to do that. You already know the steps. Double click on the right hand side of the layer and this opens up the layer styles dialog box. Now this time we want to delete the dark areas of the underlying layer. Okay. So the underlying layer has some dark pixels like the mountains and the dark stuff. You want to take that away from this layer. So we'll do just the opposite. Take this slider from the left to right, hold the alter option, click on it and make it smooth. Now that looks nice, but the colors look kind of solid. How about trying blend modes with it? What was the blend mode which brightens up stuff? Screen, right? So let's try screen. It kind of doesn't look right. Let's try overlay. <laughs> That's wonderful. You can also try soft light. Hard light, now hard light is too much. Overlay was good. Now let's create a new layer for the dark areas. So 
Why new layer? Well, for the dark areas and blend if, remember from the first example, we moved the opposite slider, not this one, okay? So that's why a different layer. Now let's take the brush and let's sample this color, make it a little darker, select B, brightness, take it down and maybe increase the saturation just a tad bit and you can experiment with different colors if you want and I'm just gonna paint in here a little bit, paint in here and make it soft and paint in a little here and there. I might change the saturation a little and maybe hue a little and paint in a little extra areas just like this and once you're satisfied you know what to do right? Just double click on the right hand side of the layer and this time opposite we want to delete the bright areas right? So we take this slider from right to left. Hold the alter option click on it that looks wonderful. Have a look, click OK. Have a look at the before and after. So this is the before, this is the after. Now you can go ahead and erase this stuff real time. You can take the eraser, decrease the flow of the eraser, maybe 20-ish, and you can just start erasing this area if you like. Now it's not soft, let's make it a little soft. And make the eraser, I guess, five. The flow, and you can erase these clouds if you want from here and there. And you can also paint in extra. So you can select this, take the brush and you can paint in extra here if you want. Now once you have done this, you're always welcome to add some extra effects to add some more spice to the image. Now, by the way, you can also decrease the opacity if you like. If you think it's too much, you can decrease the opacity. So for this, I can choose 80. Let's add some effects, right? Let's add a curves. Click on the adjustment layers icon and choose curves. Now you can do anything you want. Let's get it a little bright and give it a little curve and maybe give it a matte effect, just like this. And by the way, if you wanna know more about stylizing using curves, check this video out right here, okay? Now, you can also add some color lookup to it. So just like this, let's add a color lookup. And let's choose, say, sunset, late sunset, and change the blend mode to overlay. Does that look right? No. Soft light, that looks right, and decrease the opacity of it. Maybe that looks wonderful. How about turning off the curves? Does that look right? No. Maybe just minimize the effect by decreasing the opacity. Just like this. So, have a look at the before and after. So this is the before, this is the after. Totally different effects. So that's how to use Blender to make your skies more dramatic. And to make skies even more dramatic, you can also combine blend modes and blend if and all other effects to it. My job is to let you know what you can do. After that, it's your creativity. So just as a recap, what does Blendif do? Well, Blendif just control the visibility of the current layer. It makes parts of the layer invisible or visible based on the brightness levels of this layer or the underlying layer. Hope that made sense to you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss a thing. I'll see you guys in my next one. Until then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.